very much for accepting our invite thank you and sir thank you so much students are looking forward to your wisdom and <laughs> your input how thank they can you. follow your footsteps thank you sir thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. all right uh, chef so uh, i think we can start yeah okay so i will kind of just uh, okay. I'll just give you, Chef, if you allow me, just a few seconds. I'll give you a little background and uh, an introduction to our students. Yeah, and, let, um, and uh, so just to give you a fair idea of you know who, who we have amongst us in the classroom. Okay. Uh, of course, we have our faculty, uh, faculty, uh, faculty, uh, faculty, faculty uh, kitchen and bakery uh, programs. I think there is some dis disturbance happening because programs. maybe everybody needs to mute their cameras. These are students who uh, basically uh, come from two different groups. One is a group of students who joined us in July. And one was a student. One were one are a group of students who joined us this year in January 2020. Okay. Now, just to reiterate, uh, the students who joined us in July, these were students who were amidst their internships in various hotels. Right. There were students who were interning in restaurants and hotels, and uh, when this lockdown happened, they had to unfortunately exit their uh, internships. Right. And uh, the other students who joined us in Jan, they obviously had their classes running and. All of the sudden, this happened, but, but we've right. been very fortunate because um, all of them have been actively participating in these classes, as I mentioned to you. Yeah, we've been which is good. These classes since uh, the lockdown. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I think it has been teaching us a lot of these, a lot of new things in these last mm. one month. Yeah. So, uh, so that's the background. Um, of course, I know that the students need no introduction of yourself. Uh, mm -hmm. I've shared your profile with them. They were very excited. Um, yeah. And thank you. I think you will recall that you we've had the privilege of hosting you once at the institute uh, a few years ago. Yes, absolutely. And uh, it's I have a mixed feeling. I'm I'm on one hand very excited that you're here with us, of course, but also very sad that this isn't in person. <laughs> yeah, which is okay. I mean, there's <laughs> it, it's a great opportunity, you know, that we sitting at homes and you know can find time. Uh, so. It definitely is better. It's a boon in disguise, like I tell people nowadays. Uh, but yes, yes, inter interface is always better. I mean, face to face, uh, that can't be taken away, really. That can't be taken away. You're right, chef. Yeah. So uh, we'll uh, leave the floor to you now, chef. Uh, we'll Thank you. We'll advise the students, and there will be a question and answer at the end. Uh, yeah, for sure. About fifteen twenty minutes. Sure. And um, now right. this is the first time, uh, Arjun. I'm using this Google Meet. So how do I okay. present my screen if I have to do a PPT? You, were, you actually started it, Chef. You were able to do it right a few seconds ago. I think when you clicked on that present screen. Yeah, but how, uh, then then how do I present my screen? First, I have to open my PPT. Yes. No, no. Is so just so? click on present now. Just click on present yeah. now. And when you do, yeah. I think uh, you should get an indication on the screen of your phone that it's now presenting. Yeah, then but it says screen broadcast screen broadcast i think that should be the one yes and then you can yep i think it's working now so what 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 are you able to see there i can now see your uh, the front of your phone which says screen broadcast and okay. it, the time that's elapsed elapsed is 13 seconds okay so yeah. which is and okay so you, which means now uh, yeah now i can see your presentation your oh, okay great okay yourself. so this okay so or this is how it works pictures. okay wonderful yes yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay, great. Great, great, great. So that's it. Okay. So now we can just see Lovely. that. Okay, great. So good morning, everybody. And uh, may I all request you to put your microphones on mute, I think, so that there'll be no disturbance. And, uh, uh, you know, we can then do a question answer session. If anybody has anything, I think there's a chat window there. So you may be able to write your, uh, you know, questions up there. And, yes, uh, and post the session, then I think Arjun, you may be able to read it out to me <coughs> and I will answer absolutely. one by one. Absolutely. That's the plan. Yeah. So great. I mean, good morning, everybody. And um, I think we are here to discuss some challenges for the future chefs post uh, lockdown, you know. Uh, so we are dealing with, uh, uh, you know, a uh, lot of this COVID-19 and uh, uh, the reality is that we are facing this pandemic for the very first time in our lives. We are learning about it as we are living it each day. Each new day is bringing us another set of new strengths, new opportunities, new threats. I would not really want to talk about COVID-19 because I'm sure that by now we are all PhD degree holders from University of WhatsApp and allied social media, um, you know, on, on, on what is COVID-19. And every day we get a lot of forwards. 
but yes things have changed for us in last four weeks i must say so i was in uh, you know in italy in the end of january and i came back to india on 3rd feb and you know crossing the international airports i really didn't realize or even think that this is going to hit uh, from one month or six weeks from then uh, that the entire world will cripple and uh, you know come to almost a standstill um so yeah i, I think you know uh, just that when i came in it was february and you know like all the other organizations many of us were having their year ending financial review meetings each of the organization i think was discussing about their you know big hairy audacious goals like we say called the bhag um which means that you know they were thinking of going global getting listed on stock exchange being the most preferred company to work for um even i think the indian cricket team wanted to end its icc event trophy uh, by winning the t20 world cup which was scheduled to be held in later this year in the end of 2020 so why i'm telling you that because i think 2020 did arrive with lot of uh, hopes and you know aspirations for us a new decade brought in a new sense of purpose for many people little did we know that we had entered into a new decade with a virus under its belt called the covid 19 but how would why we are seeing that you know the covid 19 might be receding in china where it originated it just has started to take a monstrous form in many other countries especially in us europe and now india where you know it's increasing day by day uh, the vaccine for this is believed to be 12 months away some people say it will be there by end of october but unlikely until then i think the mankind has to bow itself to its mercy um india has already had almost a 40 day lock- lockdown and recent trends suggest that this is likely to be extended uh post uh, you know 3rd may and the which was the initial uh, date for the lockdown period so this has left everyone wondering what's the end to this mayhem really is it has given us that time you know there's an effective vac- vaccine in circulation we are all at constant risk of contracting this virus this not only harms us but also i think puts the lives of elderly parents and relatives you know at a very high risk people that we like um people that we love so it definitely is a big pandemic um so what's the what's the way out really what can mankind do differently to put our lives back on track and let me tell you as humans we have survived the worst maybe not you and me were not alive but i think you know the the humans have survived the uh, the bombings of nagasaki and hiroshima uh it has survived the world wars it has survived the sars and the mad cow's disease yeah they were not as uh, as pandemic as this i understand but i think eventually we all have come out victorious and i'm sure that we all will come out, uh, come out victorious still so we are already seeing some positives coming out of this lockdown period you know on the other hand if you look at it there's less pollution there is no traffic there is better healthcare um you're living with your loved ones you're cooking at more at home you're spending time um you have a lot of time to pursue now your hobbies that day it was raining you could actually see a rainbow from your balcony i mean i haven't seen a rainbow in last 30 years of my life so of course so these are some of the ways that i believe you know can become really the new way of life um and you know this new way of life is here to i think stay like for example just talk about hygiene for example so uh the hygiene was always followed in our kitchens you know but that hygiene was limited to food safety uh the new beginning will not only focus on keeping the food safe but also keeping yourself safe your customers safe your kitchen and food areas unfortunately or fortunately now have to follow a level of hygiene that is actually done in an operation theater so we did have hygiene standard but we never had a hygiene standard which would which, which would match a operation theater but i think now we are working towards that uh so what are what are going to be the new ways of life post uh, lockdown you know uh, is there so i think one of the thing really is your clothing your apparels you know called the ppe or the personal protective equipment and uh, you know for example right now uh, we are mandated to wear helmets when we drive a two wheeler or wear a seat belt if you're in a car we are expected to wear formals at a wedding and casuals to an evening party and so on so forth we have rules but i think when it comes to our own safety there are different versions of this personal protective equipment which is currently worn worn by doctors you know they look like astronauts from the space but well this could be the reality this could be the next fashion statement um i can foresee probably in the next uh, lakme fashion week you know different style of ppe are a display um i see that lot of people in our heart of the house 
uh, wearing that a lot of people in working in the receiving base wearing that a lot of people working in our food stores wearing that kind of a personal protective equipments uh, not necessarily maybe the kitchen i don't know because you know it it's you you're dealing with the fire but i think maybe bakery pastry gadmosher i think the personal protective equipment could be a big thing um work in office spaces working from home i mean working from home was surely a great concept which was followed abroad uh, but i think now it's a new thing we've learned different ways i mean we hadn't heard of too many online digital platforms yes we always talked about it but look at this google meet look at ms teams look at zoom you know all these technologies skype i mean they are really making they are the next gold mines in the field of information technology um you know and uh, it, it's also in companies interest that would save them from enormous real estate rentals which are prevalent the worldwide uh, when you have to open something so doing an online platform really takes away uh, you know your estate rental real estate rentals because you are actually doing things virtually uh sitting anywhere in your home or any part of the world so which means that you know uh, uh when now when we come back the office spaces have to become social distancing friendly which means that no two individuals can be found sitting less than you know now 6 feet apart is the new new norm um alternately each employee will have to be given probably a separate cabin maybe um with individual exhaust and air conditioning because there were certain other news that you know the air condition system can let the covid from outside in so imagine i think so those are the details that we'll have to really get into and all secrets will unfold as the you know new day arrives at our face uh, there are many companies like google coworks weworks they will have to change their you know models rethink their models because uh, their their whole work related thing is a lot of fun people group together they sit they chat over a cup of coffee they come up with new ideas but i think now uh, social distancing is the norm travel and tourism is the biggest i think the worst for travel industry you know this covid 19 is worse for the travel industry because with the aircrafts grounded travel ban enforcements we don't know when they are going to take off uh, international travelers will not only not not bring guests but will also uh, rest- restrict or just uh, you know completely stop the all the imports the ingredients that are coming from different country um but yeah i mean uh, what about you know some logic is applied for the aircrafts that instead of seats aircro- aircrafts could have individual cabins for every passenger yes so it is in- going to increase the cost it's be expens- it will be expensive but i think the air travel has always been for the rich and elite uh, that six feet logic is still feasible for railways maybe but they'll have to approve the seats um, you know in the middle berth and also in the shatabdi uh probably you know less space uh, less seats will be there because you will have to t- perpetually take out the two rows uh completely um so yeah i think ground transport in ground transport individual vehicles are the need of the hour you might have motorcycles and scooters you know which are covered with glass shields which protect you uh small self driven small cars like nano clo you know so a lot of companies like tata may want to encash into this opportunity um eating out i think is going to be really challenging because shopping and eating out will need a uh, need to change for good the restaurant with more private dining rooms to well spaced out tables will be in demand additionally hygiene transparency will be of utmost importance to every, every diner gone are the days now when we will just go to any uh, you know golgappa wala or tikki wala and you know we we in north of india make a lot of joke to say that if we have the golgappa and the guys wearing gloves how are we even going to get the taste of the real golgappa but i think that's now a serious things and i think people will not travel for tasty food they'll spend extra money but they will go for health healthy and hygienic food and any restaurant or eatery that can enforce this belief to its customers that you know it it cares for them it it, it the, the the safety of the customer is of prime importance i think those are the restaurants which are going to be in real demand um shopping might get ra- uh, rationed you know similar to the stories we've heard from our parents and grandparents maybe even an odd even formula might be enforced as well even for shopping um a lot of entertainment you know present times uh, uh, all the cinema halls are closed and you know uh, of course when they also get into opening they 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 will restrict you know the seating accordingly but nobody would want to take really the risk because they are not sure you know how they are sanitizing their seats and everything and you know going to any open spaces like that people would prefer to wash things at their home 
like we all watch you know various kind of series on netflix amazon prime and there are just so many options available so i think more and more content will be delivered online uh, film premieres and concerts will be held online uh, theaters with cabin spaces to private dining options may be probably the only way to watch movies on a silver screen so which means that really clearly a lot is set to change we are in difficult but opportunistic times individuals and companies who can think well ahead of the curve i think are set to benefit a lot from this wave of change so are we ready to really embrace this new way of life let's wait and watch because you know we all like i said are living it by each day but i think it's really challenging for any organization be it a hotel be even at your culinary culinary school you know so i think all of you really and i'm sure that you already are planning you you are putting your heads together and making standard operating procedures of what should be the norm that will be followed uh you know to to bring you all in because we don't want to spread any uh, pandemic we don't want to be uh, doing that so i think there are a lot of things that we'll have to rework out whether it's a structural change uh, whether it is you know the curriculum change um, and i'll tell you how maybe even it will impact your curriculum so i think uh, every organization is being challenged stressed by this pandemic every leader is being called upon to lead others through this complex human order and many leaders uh, that i talk to are focused on what should we do running lots of financial scenario planning exercises preparing for the what ifs what shall we do with the existing staff or the new hirings when do we start bringing our people back so there are these many questions such as these which the senior leaders also don't have a clarity as each unfolding day gives us a hope for better tomorrow um what is also needed is a comprehensive detailed plan on how you will bring your people back to work i think that is very important and especially in the case of your college i think it's even more important because you have parents back home who will be worried about your uh, health and they want to be ensure that you know their children their ward who are going to uh, a place a workplace that uh, you know their safety is of the utmost importance so a really plan focused on human physical safety in the workplace is that is what the time such as these require this by now every leader has either heard about or implemented the concept of psychology safety you know so there's something called as psych- being psychological safe in the workplace and this is done to enable the highest level of human cognitive emotional and behavioral performances i believe that if you want the highest level of human performance that is possible under the current circumstances when you bring your people back to work your people will need to feel that you're doing everything possible to make this workplace physically safe to them physical safety in this environment is necessary for people to feel physiologically safe psychologically safe one of the basic human needs of the survival you know in the maslow's theory of management it talks about an employee how an employee feels you know social belonging that you're doing everything and anything possible to mitigate their fear and anxiety about a physical act, physical safety and that's how will you do it we'll send a big message about what your brand stands for uh to your employees to your customers to your students uh to your suppliers um a message that you clearly value human life and human wellness and not only just human productivity and financial returns i understand we are all in the business of making money but i think now are the times where uh finances somewhere have to take a little bit back seat but other things which are more important have to be kept in the forefront i think what will be different for so many leaders uh, will be that they will be dealing for the first time with major human physical safety issues and that is the life or, or 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 the possibility of death so the us military really deals with life of death issues you know every time men and women are sent to the combat zones some public utilities manufacturing and chemical companies they deal they deal with this every day in their plants but generally leaders in knowledge industries retail entertainment software hospitality agriculture education media consumer products a um, lot of personal services except from healthcare we we'll rarely deal with possibility of death arising from the workplace i'm not saying there are exceptions there are not, no exceptions of course hotels is also a dangerous place to work in especially when you're working in a kitchen full of machinery but yeah it's very rare uh, but i think uh, uh, you know so we rarely deal with any possibility of death arising uh you know from any of this pandemic but i think covid-19 has really changed that reality it requires every leader now to deal with the possibility of death being caused by workplace activities and which is serious 
so which means that you know covid 19 really raises the following questions how will you physically rede- redesign your work environment to minimize the entry of and the transmission of virus into your workplace uh, you will need to have very clearly only a single entry point and a single exit point you know and that has to be manned that has to be you know sops have to be generated that how people walk in are they going to be sanitizing chambers you know where the students or the guest or anybody walks in and they get sanitized uh, what will your daily processes and practices be you know uh, uh, and that also to put in place to ensure that your people are safe how will you protect your employees who will be at higher risk especially some who are you know in their in their high age or due to any underlying medical conditions i believe you can you can't just bring people back to work you have to bring people back to a new and a different physical place of work a workplace that is redesigned to mitigate the bringing of the virus into the workplace and to mitigate the transference of virus in the workplace considering the fact that the virus can be transmitted of course very easily so putting in place and enforcing procedures processes that will minimize your employee transmitting and contracting the virus at workplace will take time every day to implement thus reducing efficiency and productivity um uh, will that requires a lot of investing of you know money in redesigning the workplace and uh, you know the infusion of medical testing daily it means you will have to invest in your employees physical safety until this covid 19 is substantially minimized Uh, by immunity by vaccination or you know um, but the reality is that this is not a not a short term risk and it is going to stay here for long um various things i mean maybe you know one has to test daily every person for covid 19 symptoms uh, as they enter the workplace every employee and visitor temperature and have to fill out and sign a covid 19 symptom form before they enter the workplace um maybe we have to stagger the you know entry of the pool maybe not all all students all guests come at the same time in a hotel scenario we might have a different arrival and departures uh, different break times for the staff different lunch activities you know staggered again uh, and and this will be done both in cafeteria as well as restaurant we might have different segregated meal periods uh, because we would have also rearranged our seating capacities you know and this is all done to so, uh, to optimize the social distancing along with limiting the number of people allowed at any one point in time uh, even in meetings work areas elevators bathrooms uh, so a lot of things i mean banquets are going to change big time a lot of hotels will have to put in an sop that they will not take a banquet larger than 30 people uh, and 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 host something like that in that same room which earlier could occupy actually you know 100 or 200 people but now that can accumulate only accommodate 30 people because you are by the distancing you are going down to the size by 1/6 because you have need to have a 6 feet uh, distance uh, maybe i think you know integrating the virtual meetings in the workplace even when you are working uh, i think will become a norm because we have meeting rooms and we don't want people to you know sit close to each other um, so we being in our offices might still be doing you know uh these meeting portals are abs- absolutely online um should we enforce social distancing in parking lots uh what about companies transportation you know like some somewhere we have hostels and you know we send them buses to pick up uh, in few resorts um i don't know if your you know any other college also i'm sure that they have their own buses to pick up students whatever but i think now that will uh, you know uh, have to be planned better because to maintain that social distancing you will be carrying on the very less students um which means that you know um maybe you can't have the classes at one point in time maybe your classes need to be staggered um should there be an sop for reporting and dealing with viral symptoms noticed by any employees at work um how will you allow the visitors to enter the workplace under what pre testing conditions i mean we all receive supplies uh from our suppliers now that is one of the most dangerous things because you know we don't know where the supplier's van vehicle has been um and how are we going to sanitize it do we sanitize his entire vehicle before he comes into our premises uh what about his baskets that he's carrying are they sanitized because you know that's traveled on the way so i think there are a lot of guidelines guidelines that we have to really come up with uh give it to our suppliers do their audit and ensure that you know they are 
uh, they're kind of actually following that because um, one of the good things really is that you know now even a vegetable vendor or a or a housemaid has understood the importance of washing hands uh, wearing uh, masks so i think uh, yeah what we could not do in a long time in india i think covid has done that that has really instilled the uh, the need of uh, following health hygiene and safety uh, to the you know a smallest denominator in our country um what about certain people who have to go out you know like in hotels for example sales people or i don't know in your organization if people go out to meet what will be the policies for that meeting the clients third <coughs> parties meeting under what conditions so we have to really think about a lot of online e digital e digital meeting etc um will just coming into the workplace be mandatory or will it be voluntarily basis or on the duty rosters that you know one week all these people are in and other week these people are in um uh, because now since most of the companies have been working remotely uh like we at obroys have been doing constant meetings over you know platforms such as zoom ms teams uh i have been every day taking classes uh, for my associates um uh, i am also utilizing the resources from my hotels and a lot of their chef, like yesterday we had a japanese class from a japanese chef from the obroy mumbai and it was so amazing that you know from one screen we could connect all the people just send them an id and they can join uh so you know both the theoretical as well as practical sessions but yeah i understand you know uh i i wouldn't suggest that you know this can completely take away the practicals because kitchen practicals are very important and uh, you know theory is one good thing but i think as uh, chefs it's important for us to hold the food smell the food taste the food touch the food and that of course you know um, completes our learning uh but i think most of the theory part or demo sessions etc can really be covered like this um what about sanitizers protocols uh you know daily application of disinfectants hand washing uh on the site individual medical screening using of protective equipment wherever possible mandatory uh delineated social distancing limiting halfway traffic in your corridors um traffic at one point, point in time if you stand in a line then that circles made you know where there's a distance followed uh limiting the number of employees to go to the break rooms lunch rooms like cafeteria etc and how will you handle a non compliance you know and the worst case scenarios where people you know have not followed it what will you do if an if a student employee reports a symptom of running slight temperature with the you know which is tested at the company's entrance so what is going to be your policies and procedures on that how will you minimize the transfer of virus at work how do you create human physical safety will really determine the effectiveness of your economic uh, you know reengagement um so yes i mean many of the things will increase our cost like you know sanitizers as various places gloves and masks uh, so all those kind of thing i think physical safety at work will be a big issue for every organization because it's complex it's very serious um and it requires leaders to prioritize values and put into place a very comprehensive set of processes uh designed to substantially remove the fear uh you know um, of this transmission of covid-19 at workplace um so this is about staff really but you know protecting our customers um not allowing interface with children and elderly at food food establishments mandating social distancing enforcing masks and gloves asking guests to maybe turn away their faces while talking to anyone you know um uh, hotels are big challenge you know because now we are looking at processes right from the start when you receive a guest at the airport and you pick him up in a car the guest might have a lot of questions um uh, that okay who used this car before how do we ensure that you know car is sanitized so we need to create the kind of a uh, you know the confidence of the guest that we are doing everything and anything possible uh, to mitigate their fear about this virus um and some structural changes inside the car maybe you know there's a policy that nobody sits in front uh there are only at the most two guests who sit at the back uh, that two extreme corners of the car um you might have to put li- little you know like a flexi plexi glass kind of a thing between the driver and the between the chauffeur and the guest uh so when they're talking etc also so you know it, it's like a sneeze guard between them um maybe a little video playing there you know whilst the guest is sitting in the car there's a video screen and you know 
your hotel video comes up to say welcome aboard and you know this is what we are doing so reiterating the fact on the journey the guest understands okay these are the things that are you know planned for him and how penny reaches the you know front office what will be the you know things uh, planned for him so i think all the things are very important uh, the guest might just see you know people sanitizing door handles knob railings he might ask the bell boy what what uh, you know chemicals are they using so i think it's important now a training and development in a big way that every employee understands every employee knows that what product in what dilution what is its impact where is that product from why are we using that product i think it's very important because guests would want to see with their more with their eyes that people are sanitizing door handles knobs railings elevator buttons switches even your credit card machines you know a lot of indirect and direct uh, you know contaminations for example mobile is the biggest nuisance so you know maybe all of you have to lock your phones away uh, in the lockers um, uh, and also in the kitchen we we have to remove the phones maybe you wash sanitize your hands but the phone rings and you pick it up you know uh, so it's it's a biggest source of contamination uh, counting cash is another you know everybody uses little bit of spit uh, to turn the cash around um, so go as far as possible digital plastic money uh, so as a result you know you don't have to handle cash because we don't know uh, where the cash has changed its places uh, so uh, please use uh, either use gloves while handling cash or or you know just wash your hands thereafter Uh, for 20 seconds you know with a germicidal soap which is important um our supplies received are not in best conditions uh, the temperatures of the things so you want to have the temperature probes to measure uh, the 4 degree celsius inside because outside the thing could be cold because it's been bought in ice but inside it could be just warm uh, you know uh, so anything more than 4 degree 5 degree celsius it should be rejected um the baskets uh, the eggs egg trays you know so there are so many things you know that we still haven't really uh, thought of uh, and uh, i think it's important that we start making you know of faqs you know a list of things so this could be a great exercise actually for all of you students that if you think of a guest uh, and say that the guest comes in what questions would a guest have you know both from the housekeeping front office uh, if you order the dish what questions might he have so i think that will give you a little bit of you know knowledge about you know okay how how to be ready prepared because this is one of the things which is staring back in our faces as senior managers and we never had you know a formal education on that but i think now it has come in and it's important that we learn from it offering sanitizers on both entry and exit sanitizing chambers for guests and staff um more focus on really food safety you know of course quality we always will maintain but i think now it will go more food safety um, and not really quantity quality but not quantity uh, so which means that you will have smaller menus um, you will have more of you know individual portions of the buffet you might have things like bento boxes or thalis kind of a concept you know where the guest just gets that um, you know installing plex plexiglass shields at the billing counters or the housemen wearing their plexi sheets you know when they are in the elevator with the guests etc so those kind of things um limiting covers in your restaurant to ensure, ensure that you know there's a social distancing so yeah all these kind of things is something that you know we'll have to really uh, you know work upon uh, but really now the thing is what can you do i mean you students who are sitting at home uh, and if you ever thought you know before that you know i want to do this and i always wanted to do this but i don't get time um so if your answer still after 6 weeks is if you haven't done anything and if your answer still is that you don't have time i think that's not true uh i think you lack self discipline you know clearly so um so so you have a lot of time at hand there could be lot of new things that you could do you could learn and acquire new skill uh it could be anything playing up a music you know um catching up on a you know writing skills um uh, uh, uh watch netflix series i mean it's amazing i've got hooked on to that Uh, some of these i have put up for you you could watch food wars there is salt acid fat heat which is absolutely great there is series on ugly delicious the chef's table uh, where massimo butoro actually is talking about his restaurant osteria franciscana and you know how uh, the certain dishes came about when there was you know in italy there was a problem with the parmesan cheese um, the mind of the chef the game changers um, the restaurant on the edge raja rasoi or anya kahaniyan for people who are interested in indian cuisine etc uh 
lot of live insta videos are available so please follow chefs uh, i also keep doing lot of live insta videos with people um, i'm going to go live again on sunday um and i've gone live in couple of you know uh, last few days as well uh, so you can you you can follow me my handle is chef bali on instagram and uh, follow other chefs also because lot of you know uh, uh, very 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 famous uh, chefs from your Euro- european countries are also doing lot of their live videos so when you follow those chefs immediately that screen will pop up and they're doing lot of great some uh, some great stuff lot of online cooking courses available you know if you go to uh you know uh, uh school in australia called the savor school it's a savor pastry school s a v o u r uh it's absolutely one of the amazing things where there's one of the mof chefs her name is christian tibals and there are videos of like you know 40 45 minutes uh where she comes on the screen and you know you can watch the video n number of times and it's not a live it's just the streaming of the recording um so ranging from you know uh tempering the chocolates uh to baking of uh, Uh, pastry i mean it's absolutely amazing uh, every week i think a new video is put about it's about 90 dollars i think for a one year subscription uh, which is 7000 you know and it is nothing uh, considering the fact that you are going to do um, you know you're going to learn actually so much from this um there are also some master classes available uh, where chef thomas keller gordon ramsay but of course there are again paid like 99 dollars for a year subscription uh but uh, you know a uh, few of you can get together get this subscription and share the money um not a right thing to do but i mean in these times you can explore that possibilities if there's a crunch of money um brush up on your technicals really you know make a plan uh and make a plan and stick by the plan there are a lot of uh, online courses even available on portals like you know edx udemy coursera and some of the courses are free uh unless you want a certificate if you want a certification then you have to pay a little amount but you can do courses to learn um uh and and make a plan like for your technicals like simple things like i want to know five italian mushrooms five chinese mushrooms uh five japanese mushrooms i want to know five types of salmon you know so make a list of that and every day go on taking that list if you do five new things a day in a month you would have done 150 things and if you had it already done it look back and see how much of time you have already lost um read one book a week and this book is not the kitchen book i'm talking about i think you should just sometimes unwind from your kitchen from your theory from your you know um uh, from your chef life and you know you should brush up on uh, read one book like you know one minute manager the monk who sold his ferrari uh, read godfather i mean anything you know alchemist by paulo coelho uh this makes you a better person uh, you're well read um, um you know your vocabulary increases um your speech delivery increases you know so I, i think books really are the biggest friends you know um have a habit of reading a book half an hour before you go to sleep you know rather than being on your mobiles because that screen can cause the stress watching a tv can cause the stress so read a book listen to some soft music i think that is how you should end your day uh and of course help your loved ones in your daily in their daily chores um there's no harm mop broom uh you know cook something uh and then just understand ingredients you know you wouldn't have much of ingredients but then what the heck i mean i got our grandmothers cook with the basic things you know uh, which we had in our kitchens so try and be creative with what with what you have um so cook um exercise you know uh, so we can't go out but do some crunches lunges anything dance um things like that because you know staying at home you're eating some good food cooked by your parents and you know as a result um, uh, we don't want you to put on weight so well that is uh, from my side and i'm uh, you know happy to take any uh, questions from all of you all right first of all uh... Shabali, thank you so, so much. That <laughs> thank was you. Extremely insightful. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Uh, thank you. Wait, I can't quite see you. Mm, now oh, I'm online. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Good. Well, I will certainly ask the students to uh, jot down the questions in the chat box and yeah. be moderating them for you. Yeah. And um, while I do that, uh, if you don't mind, I had a question. Yes, well, please. Go ahead. Question of my own. So. Yeah. Yes. you chef mentioned in your uh, presentation that rest- restaurants and eateries would need to instill a sense of trust 
you know, mm. in order for mm. diners to come out and eat, which is absolutely valid. I think yeah. it's definitely going to happen. But in my, yeah. I, I will ask you, in your view, is that going to be a, a strength or an ability that hotels will have an up and in, or will that be available, or do you think resources will be available similar to that for standalone restaurants and small eateries as well? Yeah, I think it's for all. I mean, even even a small, uh, you know, uh, you know your your street uh, chatwala. I mean, if you see him, that you know nothing has changed about him. Uh, I don't think you will go back to him. But you know, suddenly when you see that you know that person has is now selling the you know the golgappas with wearing protective equipment. He has you know dispensers to create the thing. You suddenly will be amazed, you know, and he'll become your favorite person to go to. So I think. <laughs> uh, yeah so i i think the people have to really now uh, you know be extra careful and say that this is the need of the hour people are looking at this and i must do that so do you think that this will give birth to institutions or regulatory bodies who will give guide guidelines to eateries because i think that though that was already on the yeah. table i know fssci yeah. and all these yes yes for all talking about making uh, street vendors and, and street eateries safer Mm. Do you think it'll give birth to a lot of private organizations as well to do the same? To well, it it give... it might happen, or I think it might happen that the government gets a full control of this and takes control in their hands if they can handle it. Because FSSCI, we were trying to you know in, uh, instill, but it was going slow. But I think now the timings are right. Uh, there will be a lot of hefty fines, a lot of licensing being cancelled. So I think people will be more serious about it because. Uh, they will be given ultimatums. They will be given like memos and warnings, and this could lead to their closure of business. So no, and 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 people have been living without their business from last uh, four weeks. Uh, so I'm I'm sure they've yeah. understood. You know, they've understood now that what it feels like. So nobody is going to take that risk. Absolutely. Mm. All right, chef. So we have a first question from a student. Uh, yes. He has asked that minimizing our workplace will lead to loss in business and increase in expenses. In yeah. View or rather advice. How do you think we can handle that? So you know, I think again, uh, you have to minimize wastage. Is what I would say, because uh, uh, you know now, because other on the other front, the finances are going to increase. Uh, you know, like investing in sanitizer, masks, your cleaning, safety, hygiene, all the other things. Uh, so on top of that, if you still run your operations like you were running, I think then you are incurring more operating costs. So your variable expenses have to be controlled. Uh, you know, uh, the use, usage of uh, uh, your kind of menus have to change. Um, uh, so everything basically, you know, uh, your menus have to go smaller. Because people are not looking at now raw of choices, but they are looking at you know hygienic food, safe food, simple food. A uh, lot of your raw things have to really come off for some time, like no sushi sashimis, no raw salads. Uh, they have to. So you anyway have to really rework yeah. your menus. So make your menus smaller so that your mise en place is limited, and you are also uh, you know controlling uh, the HLP cost. Uh, you are focusing on you know wherever if the air conditioning is not required, the light is not required, the water is not required. So you're being more conscious of all the other parameters where you can actually save the costs. Understood. Very well, Chef. Thank you. We have a chef uh, question from a student, uh, Nidhi, who's, mm -hmm. uh, who says, yeah. in India, we, when we talk about hygiene, we, talk, we should remember the population in small rest, small time restaurants. Uh, don't you think that more organizations are, are to be created in order to control hygiene? But I Sorry, I, I, I'm losing. Is the government or? Yeah. I am losing your voice, so sorry. I'm sorry. So, so what Nidhi is asking is, yeah. can you hear me now? Yeah, now okay. I can hear you. Okay. What, what Nidhi is asking is that, do you think that there will be a greater need or demand on organizations to control hygiene? I think very similar to what you were saying earlier. Yeah. Uh, so yes, I think a lot of more organizations have to be created, you know, in order to control the hygiene. If the government can do it, fine. Maybe we'll look at some private bodies. Uh, you know who can do it, but again, I think uh, I think gov in these cases, I think government would not let uh, the control go out to a third party uh, thing. Maybe within that organization, they'll create various various uh, um, uh, you know other uh, uh, hierarchies or you know themes where people are taking care of uh, certain responsibilities. So, but yes, like I said, you know we can all be guessing right now because every day is different. It's just bringing in new and new surprises for us every day. 
Absolutely, absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Uh, Chef, I had a question about ingredients. I mean, yes. we've, when we've been talking about yeah. operational aspects, you know, how, we, how yes. everything is going to be. If we could just talk a little bit about ingredients, do you feel that there will be a greater demand on local ingredients versus imported? Yeah, local, abs- uh, versus you, you know, food? that's what I say. It's a boon in disguise, really, you know, because uh, there was such amazing Indian ingredients that we have forgotten, uh, you know, all this yeah. while. And we were not using it, uh, but I think because we were always relying on asparagus and the broccoli and you know other stuff which were like yes. imported vegetables, our farmers in our countries are not getting dues uh, for what they grow yeah. they, because there's no demand for what they grow. Uh, yeah. Off late, I think people have started talking about health grains, bajra millets, foxtail millets, and you know, uh, yeah. and a lot of farmers have gone back to you know growing that crop, which is actually more beneficial and financially more. um uh, viable for them because you know it doesn't require too much of water it can grow up in drought conditions so bajra was an integral part of indian crop but we suddenly lost it because you know the women of the house had to do a lot of work to you know uh, kuto the bajra and you know segregate it so they 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 already had so much of work and then to do this it was a pain for them so when the wheat and the rice came from china they immediately adopted it um and now people have just forgotten the use of ba- bajra so a lot of ingredients we have forgotten yeah and we need to now go back to our roots we need to think about a lot of people are already bringing about Im- immunity rich ingredients like ginger raw turmeric and yeah. there are chefs who are creating dishes like haldi ka halwa you know so there are a lot of new things coming in <laughs> and we are fortunate that you know now chefs are educated so the chefs are also making those yes. things uh, and you know putting up the recipes and everybody wants to try and when people try then they would want those ingredients in the market then the farmers will be forced to produce that market so i think we all going to work hands in hands together to make this happen absolutely absolutely wonderful uh chef we have a question from a student standing who wants to know your opinion i think he's asked a golden question yes. do you think hotels would be hiring new staff anytime soon like in the next four to six months as hotels do depend too much on travel and tourism yeah so you know i think every organization has its own view on view on it um i can talk about obroy hotels we haven't made any decisions uh that uh, you know uh that if we don't if we need people then we will not hire them particularly but yeah in few cases we like like for example the ocld intake for this year which was already you know sealed in january uh so yes those yeah. people will be joining us uh, we will not tell them that no we are closing down the program for this year they might join little late of course okay. they might join little late but yeah for example in the case of like step program which happens right after class 12 then uh, yes that intake might not be there so i'm not to show mm. because the news is not out on it but there could be a possibility that we don't have that a uh, yeah. lot of other companies i wouldn't name them but have also have started laying off this stuff uh, but you know i think these are all those companies which have which are international uh, brand hotels uh, but i think really the you know the indian hotels uh, they 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 look at more like emotions um sensitivity and they they know how many people are dependent yes. on them so as a result you know those people will be the last one to take a decision unless a business is really pushed to that hilt you know where you are actually making a lot of losses every day so but as of now i think uh, uh i wouldn't uh, tend to give you a very rosy picture but i would say that you know i don't know we are living it by each day it could impact it could not impact absolutely i think it's uh, honestly speaking i'm not sure if anyone has the it's anyone's guess really to be honest if you, if yeah. you ask me and it is hotel to hotel that's going to change their decision yeah uh, chef, but what, there is one thing for sure there is one thing for sure yeah. you know that like i always tell people that you know food the chefs will always be making food whether the form of the food changes you know uh, so even if tomorrow you know that the, the, the there's a tablet which comes out for more makhni and you know <laughs> somehow the chefs will be working with the scientists to create those medicines uh, so so when uh, there's a there's going to be a trouble time now i think the other opportunity and windows will open up like you know virtual kitchens um more yeah. of online deliveries you know so those are the things which will be on the rise because people will need to eat uh, not everybody can cook at home right now we are doing it because we are staying at home uh, <laughs> but i think when the when the life starts i think people would not have time to cook and we have to you know these things will increase more maybe online delivery so, so etc 
So is it is it safe to say that in your view and uh, you believe there is still space available in the uh, cloud kitchen market? I mean, I I was obviously under the impression before lockdown that it was almost at saturation. No, but, not but, um, a, no, no, not at all. <laughs> I think I think that is a very underutilized market. I would say, um, and and especially wow. now with you know even five star hotels starting to use that portals for online deliveries create a big impact we, on we, the small time players really. We've been hearing a lot. Of, we've been hearing from a lot of hotels. You know, to name a few. I mean, yeah. I heard ITC was doing it. Andaz yeah. did it. Of course, I'm not sure. most of the hotels in Aero City. Yeah, we have done. We've, 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 yeah, we have done it in Bangalore, for example. Uh, we've done it okay. in Diubroy Gurgaon. Uh, we've done it in Bandra Kurla, okay. and, uh, okay. and and a lot of great business. I mean, we made a lot of money okay. in in these times with that. Yes. <laughs> good. 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 We have a question, Chef, from a student. His name is Ashwini. He wants yeah. to know: After lockdown, there will be a psychological barrier that people will have to overcome. Mm. How would we convince them to, or what can we change, other than the increasing hygiene standards? I think what his question is that, from a food producer's yeah. point of view, besides the hygiene standards, yeah. is there anything else that you think that they can do? So I think talking to your people, uh, being aware of the things, creating a list of FAQs. You know, like what what is that guest could ask you or your staff, and and being prepared for that answers really, um, from as simple thing as to say that you know. How do you wash this lettuce? Who all has tasted my food before it has come to my table? So I think that detailing and that answers. Yeah. I think it's just an open line of communication between two people uh, that can, you know, uh, break break these barriers, and the guest will feel more confident. It will not happen overnight. It will happen a couple of times. But you know, uh, the thing is, when the guests start going around telling that you must go to this hotel, this is what they've done. That's the care that they take. You know, so I think more and more of reassurances every time is, I think, important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's valid, uh, Chef. Uh, I just wanted to go back to a little bit of ingredients uh, mm. as well. You know, we were talking how yeah. the demand is going to change into local produce, um, and I must also compliment that. While I was doing some reading of my own, I found some found a very interesting article by yourself mm. at the, mm. the Hindu. Mm -hmm. You may recall two years ago, in fact, we had, we had done this piece with them. Yeah, the Vatya Patiala, maybe. Yeah, name. yeah, correct. Yeah, there were a lot of ingredients. That was amazing. I must say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so this, I think, will be a great time for farmers, like you said, and they'll become the heroes once again, which they always were. Yeah, absolutely. And absolutely. So do you do you believe there'll be? A, I mean, see, the whole concept or the whole perception is that plant-based food is safer. Do you think that's mm. going to be even more instilled now? Yeah, I think. I think so, but you know there are, there are no reports particularly to say that you know if you eat non-veg then you are more susceptible to having this. But yes, uh, non-vegetarian dishes you know the, the the viruses thrive more on animal proteins etc., which is true. But if you have something which is clean, hygienic, then I don't think you know it is uh, uh, it, it's really a threat. But yeah, having raw meat, even for that matter, having a raw vegetable or something can pose a threat. Uh, but yeah, vegetarian I think has always been the way forward for our culture uh, in India, and I know a lot of chefs who are vegetarian. Uh, yes. Know. So so be, okay, being right. being a vegetarian like uh, for a chef, I think it's it's the in thing really. So yeah. And I, I I myself considering it. It's it's quite quite interesting. What I mean, it's under it's underplayed in India. I think. Yeah. At least in the restaurants. Yeah, that's and, true. Um, so, so, so it certainly has a lot of opportunities. Great, mm. uh, students. Do we have any other questions? Uh, so there was, I think, one question asked that I have many stories of the restaurants which are famous all around the world, but there is no name of yes. any restaurant yes. in India, Chef. Uh, <laughs> no, as an eh? I mean, there are a lot of restaurants. There is there is Sarvana Bhavan in all different parts of the world. You go to London, Dubai, U.S., New York. Yes. Uh, pe people know about Indian restaurants, um, uh, so there are good brands like people across the world know Indian accent now. You know that is that is a great restaurant, yes. uh, which is you know uh, listed in top fifty restaurants of the world. Uh, so we are getting there. I mean, if you look at look at Bukhara. Bukhara. Yeah, Bukhara is is a, everybody in London knows about Bukhara. So there, it's not true. Yeah. There are restaurants, uh, you know, which are on the world culinary map. There are people who are wanting to try Indian food. Come, um, so it is there. But yeah, I mean, we don't have things like Michelin star yet in our, uh, you know, country. But the day Michelin star comes, I think 
you know, within a month, we will be having more than 50 or 60 restaurants just in Delhi having Michelin stars. Wow. So, that's, that's so yeah. Very encouraging. That's very, yeah. very encouraging. Thank you. <laughs> in your view, if I may ask, in your view, is, it, uh, is there any special reason why the Michelin hasn't reached India yet? I mean, what is your take on that? Well, you know, somebody has to bring it to our country. Somebody has to bring it to our country. One, because it's 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 a lot of money. Uh, so actually, to be enlisted into Michelin and all, there's a lot of money to be spent. So currently, you know, many of our restaurants uh, are are struggling. You know, they they're they're still trying to put their foot on the ground, um, and it just requires yeah. some crazy amount of money to be listed in Michelin and all that. So I think it is. Uh, Maybe, maybe one day that Indian Culinary Forum is going to, you know, or the IFCA is going to think about this and we, we chefs will do maybe. something, something will happen. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I think Mr. Datta had just uh, one of uh, Yes, please. Well, thank you, chef. Yes. Thank you, sir. First, thank of all, you. first of all, nice to see <laughs> a crisp white uniform yes, while you were at you. home. <laughs> That's wonderful. Thank That's you. That's a great example. <laughs> that uh, it is possible to yeah. stay fresh alert. No, I, I, very... I just feel very comfortable. Every morning before I take my classes, yeah. I mean, I'm always changing into my chef uniform. So that's incredible, chef. I'm very mm -hmm. impressed. I think that shows a commitment to the yeah. overall concept of standards. They cannot be changed because the environments have changed. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. I'm sure my students will be very motivated. And so mm -hmm. would be faculty. You see a chef in white uniform, immaculate, clean, very good. Yeah, you I mean... Very nice one. So also, uh, yes, my sir. first question was, you are a known cycling enthusiast. Mm. Uh, I've known you go to Jaipur on cycle and come this morning. Yeah, even Bombay in five days. Right? Uh, Delhi so, to Bombay in five days. <laughs> right. So how do you plan? How are you coping up now? The, that must be missing you cycling. Yeah, I, I really miss my cycling. I have been, uh, uh, you know, uh, watching some crazy videos where, you know, you, you can lie down on the floor with the cycle turned on top of you. When you <laughs> so maybe I will try some crazy things like that. But yeah, I, I mean, doing little exercises, etc. Taking control of your diet is the best thing that we can do. So uh, that was my question. What is your exercise to do these days? Which the students can be inspired to follow. Will so, you know, I... Yeah. I, I really go down in my local in my society around uh, early morning like six o'clock because I, I still get up at five thirty which is my wake up cycle so I go down for at least forty five minutes of walk brisk walking while listening to my morning part and doing all that so everything happens uh, then I come up and you know my wife is still sleeping and I do boil the milk and you know do the utens I wash the utensils before she gets up prepare maybe some breakfast wow, wow, wow. <laughs> you know then then get ready and really um, put the washing machine on with the clothes so I, I do that kind of stuff you, you you make it sound so easy chef no it is easy I mean, <laughs> you know you you want to do it or you don't want to do it it's the choice is yours that's an, honest, that's an honest chef i must say <laughs> and then nine to nine to six i'm busy in my classes my next class is going to start at 12 now um, okay. And uh, post six, then we have our internal meetings. Everything goes till seven thirty. I play a game of Ludo with my wife, uh, then play a board game uh, in the family, and you know that way the the time just goes away. <laughs> and you highlighted some very relevant points. I think which are going to help us all. The first yeah. of all, cell phone. It will be the it's the biggest carrier of yeah. infection. Correct. And uh, I think if we can part with it, yeah. Uh, in the locker rooms, yes. that would be a great achievement. Yeah. One, uh, from the hygiene point of view, yeah. and from the distraction point of view also. Yeah, also. And, and we always think the life will come to a standstill. But, you know, mm -hmm. I, I've only mm -hmm. seen mobile phones so active in the last 10 years. And I'm, I'm sure yeah. we all of us lived through times when yeah. we did not have mobile phone. We, in fact, had one phone in the neighborhood. So I keep yes. telling these young people that we used to have one phone in the neighborhood and somebody's yeah. used, calls used to come at that person's house. Uh, so not everybody had even yeah. landlines uh, then. And they would interrupt. They would interrupt. Say three minutes over. Ha, huh. correct. And have... Correct. <laughs> and you have to book trunk calls uh, to yeah. talk on an STD. You know. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, so crazy. Are, yeah. But I think uh, the cell phone point is very very valid. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. we will be looking at assurance of hygiene. Yeah. And, and like I... you said, exactly how you wash your salad, you should yeah. be able to answer these questions. I think that changes the chef's profile. You know, I think, they, Mr. Dutta, we do a lot of things because it's becoming our habit and we don't realize mm. it. I think maybe mm. now is the time to have a camera 
and record a session mm. and then a team of people who are you know made as hygiene monitors uh, for one week on a rota basis at the end of the day mm. they see the recording of 3 4 hours mm. and they make their pointers that what went wrong okay and in the next day morning meeting mm. those students should come up bravely and say this is what happened now whoever makes the mistake yeah. if mr datta has made the mistake they should be bold enough to say right. mr datta you did this 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 in the video and i think we need to change that you know so i think that kind of open culture where we are all yeah, learning from each other i think it's a great thing yeah, very very true, very true. and the health thing like you said customer like to deal with healthy people yeah, because absolutely. that shows the disease and, and so the personal health also has yeah. becomes and, and it has to become habit it has to become a part of us and mm. it can only become when we start being more and more aware mm. of it so now when i go down i mm. always press the lift button with my knuckle you know because i know this yeah. is not what i'm going to touch on my face and i made it a habit yeah. so i do that and then i come up and wash mm. my hands so i think it's just being aware of little little things and uh, you know mm. focusing on the you know devil details basically and and then looking a way forward to it also i feel for the uh, students curiosity or anxiety yeah. what is in for us future i feel come what may people won't stop eating food <laughs> yeah <laughs> they, they will need and they will need cooks for them no. i think the demand will be there always it is not yeah. it must shift in terms of the way you deliver food yeah for it but uh, i don't think there is any anxiety should be no there should the, be uh, i think and for sure it will only increase i think with more I, aware more specific issues it will only we are, really, we are really blessed that we are going through this yeah. phase that we are learning how to yeah. come out more stronger um yeah. and uh, like, like there's an english song which is my favorite when the going gets tough the tough get going uh, yeah, so i think yeah. these are the times where you have to um, stay calm uh, stay at home not feel anxious mm-hmm. uh, look after yourself and uh, whatever is going to happen is going to happen with all of us you know so that is that is yeah. another way of looking at it i also had a thought which i wanted to share if yes, people, because restaurants are going now social distancing yes and everywhere yes think concept of home restaurants will emerge where Maybe. people will create restaurant environment in their homes could be and could the be chef so. will call yeah absolutely see? absolutely that can be totally change the eating out or eating uh, style absolutely and so. more and more hard then you know one Because step one step more could be that you know there could be a restaurant hired for 2 hours you know like a small space mm-hmm. which is rented out to different chefs yeah. so let's say manish merotra is mm-hmm. cooking from 9 to 11 in the morning chef bali is cooking from 11 to 1 in the afternoon you know and yeah, that is really. all on the social media so i do my menu for 2 hours i have my visa plus and whatever deliveries happen happen during that time so people mm-hmm. get even to choose the chefs in a particular so you're you're a chef on the you know uh, on the yeah. show for that two hours so a lot of these platforms could be mm. big in upcoming and running and it's a great opportunity for you know young students mm. you know who can encash on all this because you're digitally um, you know savvy uh, you know the markets so yeah look at opportunities so very much bali you have given a lot of food for thought to our students mm. thank I'm you i'm sure uh, pick up their points and uh, follow your i like the best suggestion of yours that uh, there should be one A gap between your TV and the sleep. That's yes. interesting idea. <laughs> Read yeah. before you sleep. I think that's yeah. an incredible thought. Yeah. And uh, reading will always help. Yeah, and don't read from the phone. Don't read from the phone. No Kindle, yes. nothing. Away from the screen. Okay. So thank you very much, Shabab. I have. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we just have one last question, Chef. Uh, Bali, sure. if you don't mind, just one last question. From sure, our sure, sure. We sure. have a sure. question from Chef Saurab, mm-hmm. uh, who, by the way, is also from the Obroys. Right. Um, chef Saurabh is asking. According to you, Chef, how do the how will the hotel industry or any food industry cope up with the cost that will be put on the implementing all these precautions you shared? Mm-hmm. And how will it affect a normal guest pocket in terms mm-hmm. of money, especially talking about social and corporate events and traveling groups? So, how will the hotels and guests cope with this? So you know, yeah. I mean, it is it's a difficult question, uh, but I think we will find a way in terms of you know. Uh, that whoever is eating out, the guest, etc., will know that you know now he's really going in for a luxury, because it, it, it's it's not the need of the hour that the guest has to come and eat. So if he's going for luxury, he will have to pay an extra price. Uh, so the costs are going to increase. Uh, 
a lot of things like you know if the suppliers we are going to sanitize their vehicles every time they come in with the deliveries um i think we'll have to charge that you know uh, the cost of sanitizing the vehicles we have to charge it to the suppliers you know so those kind of things so somewhere down the line we also have to look at our cost allocations and uh, but yes it will burn a hole in your profits for sure uh, uh, but i think it's a it, it's you scratch my back i scratch yours you know so i think we'll have to work towards that kind of a system where you know we all are sharing both our fears anxieties profits losses yeah yeah okay, okay. so i i, well, I think i have to run because i'm already 7 minutes late for my know. other class no, no problem chef i'm okay. thankful Great. so much thank yes. you very very much for being here and uh, we'll be sending you a link to this uh, sure. class as well thank you thank you so much for taking out the time thank you thank, thank you, you so much yeah thank you so so chef maybe chef thank you sir thank you right thank you i am not here online